my Maury Sendak story, and it's one of the reasons that, you know, I like to know that everybody's just a regular guy. Um, when uh, Too Young for Yiddish was coming out, my publisher asked me um, if there's anyone I might like to blurb the book. And I said, well, if there were anybody, I would love Maury Sendak. Um, and they said, well, Maury Sendak doesn't do blurbs. Uh, he's a busy man. And I said, well, send him the manuscript anyways. Maybe he'll write me a letter and say no, and then I'll have Maury Sendak's signature on a letter saying no. And I was sitting in my office one day, and the uh, caller ID came up, and it said M. Sendak. I let it ring three or four times while I caught my breath. And I picked up the phone, and Maurice said, I don't do blurbs, but I read your manuscript and I like it, so I might write something for you. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Maurice can be a kind of a crusty guy, uh, not necessarily warm and fuzzy. Uh, he says what he thinks. He's blunt. He's sharp. And uh, I said, oh, Mr. Sendak, thank you so much. I so appreciate it. And Maurice said, I'm not doing you a favor. I'm writing something because I like the book. So no need to thanks. And, uh, and I said, well, I just really appreciate it. I'd love to meet you someday. And in kind of the offhand way we often do, he, uh, Maurice said, well, I'm, you know, our paths will cross maybe. If you're ever down uh, my way, give me a call. And uh, if I'm around, we can get together. And I said, how about tomorrow? Because how many times is Maurice Sendak's name going to come up on my caller ID? Uh, so there was quiet for a while. And uh, kind of on the spot, Maurice said, well, sure, I guess so. And I took advantage. I got in my car that next day. I drove down. I uh, went into Maurice's house. Uh, we had a wonderful time. It was absolutely great. He was working on Brundabar at the time. And uh, because a lot of my books have kind of a historical and a Jewish influence, we had a lot to talk about. My daughter had performed in the opera Brundabar when she was younger. And I think the story I uh, told you was Maurice was having difficulty uh, coming to his vision of the book. And because a friend of mine had a grandmother who was in the Terrazin concentration camps where Brundabar is set. And she had, in fact, uh, for those of you who don't know, Brundabar was an opera that the uh, Nazis made the Jewish concentration camp uh, inter inmates perform for visiting dignitaries to make it appear as though they were being treated well and that they had art in the camps. And uh, the children would perform the opera and after which they would be put to death. And, um, and that uh, went on uh, and on. Well, the very last cast, um, just before liberation, a couple of those people uh, still are alive. But a friend of mine's grandmother actually uh, smuggled out the original stage setting for the Brundabar Opera from the camps. And uh, she had it in her home. I had framed it for them. And when I told Maurice this story, uh, he asked if I could borrow that for him so it could be hanging above his desk while he worked on that book. And I was happy to do so. Uh, 